Chapter 1 God in human form Anand Balude Anand Balude Anand Balude Anand Balude आनंद बालुडे कनवारी गुर्तिम पैटुक वच्चे आराम चंद्रुडे याराम चंद्रुडे कनबंटुलन पनिगोनग वच्चे आई सुडे बाल साई सुडई नेडु तन गुम्पु तो आडु कोनग वच्चे आ महा विष्णुवे इमही विष्णुवे तन आयुद मुलु चे कोनग वच्चे अल्ल परमात्म यनु बोम्मलाट गाडू तानु जीवुल रंग स्तलान निलची आडू नानाटी इनाटी आट चूची सुन्त वर्निंची கொந்த ஆனந்த படுடு ஆனந்த படுடு The divine child of Nanda has come again as the embodiment of Ananda to find his playmates Lord Rama has come again as the blissful Ramachandra to find his subjects Lord Ishvara has come again as Sai Ishvara to play with his group. Lord Vishnu has come again as the all-pervading Lord on this earth to collect his weapons. That great puppeteer called Paramatma keeps the jivas on the stage of the world and conducts the cosmic play, witnessing and describing a little enjoy that eternal divine play in ancient india the women used to perform the satyanarayana vrata a religious vow to propitiate lord satyanarayana with great faith and devotion in keeping with that ancient tradition the mother of this body ishwaramma also used to worship lord satyanarayana and listen to the divine story at the end of the ritual in the company of Subbamma, her neighbor. On one particular occasion, it was very late in the afternoon by the time the Vrata was completed in the house of Subbamma. Neither Vishwaramma nor the other members of the family had taken food till then. All the members of the family were frustrated and resented the strict discipline accompanying the performance of the ritual, saying, Why should there be so many rules governing the performance of the Satyanarayana Vrata? Ishwarama's husband, Pedda Venkamaraju, denounced her insistence on the observance of these rules strictly. But Ishwarama was not yielding. She firmly and politely replied, You may take your food, if you're hungry, I am not hungry. I will take my food only after the completion of the Vrata and partaking of the Satyanarayana Prasadam, sanctified offering made to Lord Satyanarayana. In the meanwhile, Subhama had completed the Vrata and brought the Prasadam for Ishvarama to partake of the same. 
it was only after partaking of the prasadam that her pregnancy got confirmed and continued. It is said, Yad bhavam tad bhavati As you think, so you become. The sthiti, status, and gati, destiny of a human being, will be in accordance with his thoughts and resolutions. Ishwaramma was an illiterate. She did not learn even a single alphabet. Nevertheless, she used to have unflinching faith and devotion towards God. One day, in the seventh month of her pregnancy, Subhama came to her house and said, Ishwaramma, your conception got confirmed and retained only after you partook of the Satya Narayana Vrata Prasadam. Hence, you name your child to be born as Satya Narayana. The mother of Petavenka Maraju, mother-in-law of Ishwaramma, also agreed to this suggestion with great faith and devotion to Lord Satya Narayana. A significant incident happened during Ishwaramma's pregnancy. Puttaparthi was a small hamlet tucked in a remote corner of Anantapur district in those days. It had no modern conveniences like roads and water supply. There used to be a well in the midst of four houses from which people used to draw water with the help of a small bucket for their daily requirements. One day, Ishwaramma was fetching water from that well. Suddenly, there was a flash of brilliant light in the sky. The wind blew and a cluster of divine light entered into the womb of Ishwaramma. Subhama, who just came out of her house, also witnessed that scene. She told Ishwaramma, I saw a brilliant light entering your womb. I have not revealed this fact to anybody so far. I am revealing this truth for the first time, so that people may realize how great and immaculate is the nature of the avatar. On the eve of Swami's birth, Pedavenka Maraju was walking in front of the house of Subhamma. Subhamma called him into her house and told him, Venka Maraju, you please name your son to be born as Satyanarayana. But he did not give much thought to her suggestion, thinking that it was a foolish sentiment of the women. The next day, Ishwaramma gave birth to a son at an auspicious moment early in the morning. It is natural for a child to cry the moment it is born. But this child did not cry. Observing this strange phenomenon, the women around got panicky as the child appeared to be still born. Ishwaramma too, on hearing these words, was very much afraid. She just pinched the child so that he might cry. But the child delighted the people around with an enchanting smile. What a great surprise! A newborn child, not even an hour old, was displaying an enchanting smile. In the meanwhile, Karanam Subrahma arrived on the scene and told Ishwaramma, I heard that you delivered a male child. I have come to see him. Subhama was a Brahmin woman. The Brahmin women in those days were observing orthodox customs and traditions very strictly. Hence, Ishwaramma put her newborn baby on a cloth and kept him on the floor at a little distance. In the meanwhile, the mother-in-law came there and advised her. What, Ishwaramma? Subhama came here with a lot of expectation to caress the child lovingly, and you're keeping it at a distance. You place the child in her hands. Ishwaramma replied, Dear mother-in-law, I was afraid that she might be hesitant to touch a newborn baby. That is why I kept it at a distance. In fact, Subhama was not the one to entertain 
such differences. The boy is glowing day by day like the moon in the brighter fortnight of a month. However, his behavior used to be rather strange. He was not talking to anybody. He was a Mithabhashi, one of few words, and Mithabhari, moderate in the intake of food. The mother Ishwaram was surprised at his strange behavior. Children usually clamor for eatables. Whenever they compose an eatable, they stretch their hands. But this particular child was not at all interested in food. Another characteristic of his was that he never used to allow non-vegetarian food to come anywhere near him. Also, he never used to visit the houses of non-vegetarians. Ishwarama could decipher from his behavior that he avoided non-vegetarian food since he was a divine child. The elder sister, Venkama, supported her mother in all such matters. Both of them together were looking after this divine child very lovingly, constantly singing the glory 